For now, though, let us go back to Norfolk. And also, I should let you know that on Friday, it's the return of Invicta. And our next guest will be providing color commentary for that event over on UFC Fight Pass. She's one of the top contenders in the women's featherweight division. She is the one and only Megan Anderson, the pride of Australia, joining us coming off her big win on Saturday. Megan, how are you? Congratulations. Thank you. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. By the way, why were you walk, rocking a uh, Jurassic Park t-shirt on Saturday? Because uh, <laughs> I like Jurassic Park. It's one of my favorite movies. So I thought I'd kind of rock it. I'm rocking like a a, a Lion King one right now. <laughs> so oh. well, I thought I'd throw it back. Uh, we here at Disney appreciate the uh, the shout out to a uh, a Disney film. Thank you. I, I like the fact that they let you wear that because before they were so like strict about what you wore, and it seems like they've eased up the reins a little bit. So I thought there was something more to it, but it, it just appears to be that you're a fan of the film. Yes. <laughs> well, I think like go, like when you walk to the venue and stuff like that, they kind of give you some free reign, but uh, it once you have the fight like on the the broadcasting side for the most part and you're fighting it has to be rework so okay um well congratulations on a great performance and with you you've been so great and so open about your journey and about you know coming into your own dealing with your emotions anxiety you were so great and i'm so appreciative of the fact that you were so open when you were on the show a couple months ago so and so i have to ask what was it like this time were you dealing with that sort of thing or are you starting to get more comfortable um yeah, I'm definitely getting more comfortable. Uh, I don't think like it ever goes away, but you, you learn to manage it. And, and I think, you know, I have a really great team around me and James, my coach, uh, he's, he does a really good job of communicating and, and you know, ex helping me accept those nerves and, and, and for me to be able to put on a great performance. Like one of the requirements is like I need to feel some form of nerves and uh, to be able to get in the zone. And, and it's a good thing. And if I didn't have nerves, we would, we should be a little worried. <laughs> and, and so do you think the fact that you looked so good in your last fight, do you feel like that gave you a little more confidence? And as opposed to coming off a loss, you're starting to doubt yourself. You're putting pressure on yourself here. You're, you're on a roll, right? So you don't have to put as much pressure on your shoulders, right? Um, I'm always going to put pressure on my shoulders just because I'm so hard on myself and I expect so much more from myself for my own kind of goals and, and that kind of stuff. But really it's, it's, you know, my mindset has changed and I've gotten a rid, I've, I've changed all the things and I, and I've removed a lot of toxic and negative people and energy around me. So I'm just in like a really good place and I'm working through my shit every day and I'm just trying to be a better person and be a better martial artist. And I'm glad that it's finally coming out in my fighting. Did you view this? I, I asked uh, Felicia this question earlier. Did you view this as a mini tournament? And the fact that you were first, did you say to yourself, all right, I have to do something spectacular to set the tone here and almost put pressure on her? Um, not really. I didn't, I didn't see it like that at all because like for me, like all of that talk about title fights and that's, that's going to be there this week. Uh, so like it's it's not going to go away, so there's no point in worrying about something that I can't control. Uh, so my main priority and my main focus was Saturday night. Uh, Norma, you know, is a is a great competitor, and she brings skills to the table that you can't overlook. And I never want to be the type of fighter that I am overlooking somebody because I want like a title shot or I want to fight this person. Like I, I felt like she deserved my respect in making sure that I was prepared for her and I was focused solely on her and I wasn't overlooking her because anything can happen in this game. You know, one punch can change the course of a fight. So I said this earlier, I, I'll be up front with you. And I, I said that I feel like this was the best case scenario for you, that the night played out perfectly for you because you had a great win, great performance, great finish. You're on a streak now, but Spencer wins as well. She gets the title shot because, of course, she does have a win over you uh, less than a year ago. This gives you an opportunity to grow a little more, perhaps fight back um, in Australia in June, buys you some time go on a real nice streak, build up that confidence, and then you're ready for Amanda Nunes. So Spencer winning is, in a weird way, kind of a silver lining. It, it buys you time to when you're truly ready for Amanda Nunes. Am I crazy? Are you upset at me for saying this? Um, I really don't care. I feel like everyone has their own opinion about it. Um, 
if they want me to fight her next, it's, if, if they want me to fight Amanda next, like I'm going to be 100% ready. But I also wouldn't be surprised if they gave it to Felicia. Like I do understand she has a win over me. And, you know, I feel like my performance on Saturday, I was in a lot of similar positions on the cage as I did with Felicia. And um, a year ago, you know, that would have been a takedown, but I've changed so much, not just with my technique, like I'm constantly getting better as a fighter, but those skills were always there. I just had to get my mind right. Um, and I feel like we're doing that. And, you know, I, I have a feeling that they're going to give it to Felicia. Uh, I don't know. They, they seem to, to like her and, and they'd like to give her those type of opportunities. And, and if that's the case, I feel like she's an incredible athlete and she's a top competitor and, and I wish her all the best. But uh, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. So there's no point in, in me worrying about it. I'm not going to lose any sleep over if they don't give me a title shot. I know it's going to know it's going to come when it's supposed to happen. And I want to keep, if they don't give me the shot, I want to keep consistently fighting uh, and racking up those wins and showcasing why I should be fighting for the title. So when you saw Felicia win in the first round, there wasn't a part of you that was like, ah, oh, darn it. This kind of hurts my chances a little bit. No, not really. Like I would never like, you know, I would never wish somebody else like to lose um, because, you know, that's her career. And, and I wish her like I wish everybody a successful career unless you're fighting me and then I want to win. But then I also wish you a successful career. Afterwards. Right. Um, so I think, you know, her winning was great for her career. And, and I think. I just find it funny that people are kind of saying that, oh, uh, I fought, you know, the lesser competition, but l let's let's be real here. I, I feel like I've had one of the hardest strings in the U uh, hardest set of competition in the UFC. And I would also say that, uh, you know, Felicia is coming off a win over somebody that I also beat faster, I think, as well. So I feel like I, I have a... A good case, but if they wanted to give it to Felicia, like all to her, I, I hope she's, you know, successful, and I'll be watching that fight if that's if that's the direction they want to go. I think the the best part about all of this here's a weight class that for some time we didn't know if it would have a future. I think you were frustrated as well. There was no direction. They weren't booking <laughs> fights and all this stuff. Now all of a sudden we have a champion who is active, who can stick around at 135 and just kind of you know put that belt off to the side and allow it to collect dust and is telling the UFC, no, I want to defend this title as well. And we have two contenders. When's the last time we had two contenders at 145? Two young fighters who have looked good as of late, rising up. Like I feel like this idea that 145 should be shut down is no longer a thing. So that has to be the best part about all of this, right? Yeah, I feel like it's taken a while to, to get to this point. Um, a lot of frustration, definitely. But uh, I really hope that this is a great step forward for the division. And um, I feel like Felicia and I put on great performances. And I feel like we showcased that, you know, there are great people and great athletes in this division that they can kind of get behind and build and I really hope that they kind of sign some more people now. Yeah. Uh, how, how would you, I know you kind of moonlight as a, uh, as an analyst here for, for ESPN over on the Australia, New Zealand side of things. So could I ask you okay. how you would rate your chances or her chances, I should say, Felicia's chances against Amanda Nunes if they do in fact fight in May, do you think she has a shot? Um, that's the beauty of MMA. I think anyone has a chance. But uh, watching her fight against Zara, uh, she was struggling with that range. Um, and I think Amanda's str striking is much better than Zara's. And I, and I feel like she might have some issues trying to close that range. Amanda is very physically strong too, and she's very well-rounded. So I, I feel like it's going to be a tougher fight for Felicia than the, than the cyborg fight, in my opinion. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Um, you mentioned, you know, like getting mentally ready and doing things differently and, and weeding out the bad people and just trying to be in a good headspace going into fights. Are you doing anything differently like weeks before or when you get to Norfolk, for example, is, is the fight week process a little different for you so that hopefully on Saturday it doesn't feel overwhelming? Yeah, we just try to have fun with it. Um, and I think for me, like I get it. I over process things and I overthink things and I get in my head so much about 
uh, my expectations and how I want the fight to go and, and all this kind of stuff that like, we just kind of make it fun. We just keep it pretty low key, keep it chill. And I think that has kind of worked really well for us. And, you know, we switch on when we need to. It's rare for uh, an athlete in their prime, such as yourself, to open up about their their mental health struggles as much as you did on the show a couple of months ago. And I'm wondering what kind of feedback you got from that and if that has changed um, in terms of you wanting to talk about it more, to be more of an advocate or anything like that. Did you get any kind of feedback? Yeah, I got a tremendous amount of supportive feedback and it was truly, it was truly heartwarming. And um, I cannot thank everyone enough for that. And it definitely is scary opening up because there was a lot of stuff that I kind of talked about that I'd never, never mentioned before. Um, so it, it was definitely a little scary, but I think there is like a strength in vulnerability. And, and I just hope that if I can help one person, then that's, you know, my job is done. Amen. Um, so if it doesn't happen for you on May 9th, would you like to fight on that Perth card? Is that the, the other goal? Yeah, I would like to fight on Perth, uh, on Perth, on the Perth card, um, if possible. But I would love for the UFC to come back to Kansas City and be able to fight in front of my adopted home city now. Mm. Um, I think we we have like a great fan base here. We have some of the best fans in the world. Uh, the Midwest always loves to fight. They always turn up. I'm, I'm pretty sure we broke some records at the Sprint Center when they they came here last and and it was about time they came back to Kansas City so I'd love to fight on the Kansas City card or the Perth card just depending if they come back here or not uh, and, and until then you've got the uh, Invicta card this Friday right doing some uh, some analyst work yes. this is your first time correct yes I'm uh, making my color commentating debut and I am so excited about this not just because I'm you know being able to put on my color commentating hat but I'm also being able to witness the first MMA event to have the open scoring. Oh, yes. Which I think is very interesting. Yes, that's going to be fascinating, right? After every round, it's going to be? So I don't think they will do it for the tournament style because it is just a one-round fight. Yep. But they have a couple uh, – they have a they have a, a, a three-round fight somewhere in the middle just – so they can give the tournament style like a bit of a break between fights. And then uh, the the final for the tournament will be a three round. So you will know going into each round. And then the main event is a title fight for the Bantamweight champion. Right. We're, we're crowning a new Bantamweight champion for the Invicta FC division. And, you know, that's a five-round fight. And particularly with a lot of the, the recent you know, championship fights with Invicta, they've been very close and there's been a lot of controversy going into those, you know, final rounds and the decision. And and I think this is this is a perfect opportunity to showcase, you know, how it is important. Like for me as an athlete, I would want to know. Like yeah. if I'm in a tight fight and it is super close and we're going to those championship rounds, I would want to know where I'm kind of at because if I think I am winning but then we look at the scorecards and they're not, and I'm not winning. Okay, we need to change something up to get the job done. Yes. Oh, I can't wait for that. That's going to be fascinating to watch from home as well. So it's going to be you and the great Jimmy Smith doing play-by-play. -play. Yes. And uh, to add a, another wrinkle to that, one of the more outspoken fighters about this open scoring uh, you know, discussion as of late has been Max Holloway. And I understand Max is going to go to the event as, as well to see it in person. So I think that's really cool yeah. on his part. I just found about that yesterday, uh, which I think is incredible. I think, you know, the more top level athletes that campaign for this, uh, the better, because when you think about it, like there is no one governing body that rules MMA here in the States. Uh, so then that's why there's such a big discrepancy between judging, between scoring, between, you know, what is a, what is considered a downed opponent, what is considered a not downed opponent. Um, and I think because of that, the rules aren't going to change. So I feel like this is a good step forward in the right direction to at least for the athletes to take back some control. Megan, congratulations on the win. Uh, great stuff and good luck on Friday. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much.
Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.